Hey all, welcome back to the channel for another episode. So uh, we're gonna keep on going on this body work and uh, I think we're cruising along pretty good. So uh, let's take a look at what we're gonna do this time. No, you're not bringing home another piece of junk. <laughs> My oil pressure is good. You know, like I said, this is kind of a throw together motor. Um, so I'm end up pulling that valve cover off of there. And uh, just checking and see if maybe I got a valve a rock arm coming loose. But to me, it sounds deeper than that. It sounds like it's more in the bottom of the engine. in there so I'm not going to try and press all over. But uh eh sometimes that's what happens when you throw cheap motors together, you know. A lot of times they work, sometimes they don't, but not gonna not gonna give it the uh the last rights until we dig into it a little bit more. So uh anyway back on this so um I went and I took a piece of sheet metal and I went over to my brake. I wanted to see if you can see that little, how that body line bend is there. I'm wondering, can I make that on my, that kind of brake, that tight of a bend? And so I made that and I'll tell you what, it's pretty darn close. Fact, I think it, it actually, or no, wait a minute, I'm looking the wrong side, this side. This is what we want. Kind of see how that goes. I mean, that, that is really, really close. So I think I should be able to make um, these panels instead of whacking them out of that other end. But uh, anyway, trying to figure out what we're going to do today. So on, on this video, I'm hoping to get all three of these uh, made and tacked in and get this panel tacked in. So I'll tell you what, let me, uh, and we need to make this corner. I don't know if I'm going to do that on this video or the next one. But anyway, let me get, uh, let me get the paint cleaned off this patch piece and, uh, We'll do a little bit of trimming on it, and we'll uh, see what we got to do. I think we're going to try. I'll probably trace it, and then cut the inside of the trace out, and then tack that on there, and then cut and butt it on there is probably what I'll do, because if I put that over it, then I'm not going to be able to get all that junk out of there. I don't know if that'll work or not. Okay, anyway, let's get it cleaned up and take a look and see what we're going to do here. Okay, so I got this all cleaned off and I had to bend a little lip on the bottom there to match that lip down there. Just a second. 
All right, so I think I've got this pretty, pretty good. It's nice and flush. Should be able to get that uh, tack in there with no problem. I think. Here right now. I don't know, maybe flatten it out a little bit. What I'm gonna do is take a uh, <clears throat> Sharpie and trace around this thing, and then we're just gonna cut inside the line about an inch. And uh, cut that, get that cleaned out. If there's any rust in there, we'll treat that. And then we will uh, do the cutting butt on this deal. I cleaned off the back of this, there's a little surface rust there. I think I might, uh, um, Spray a little rust inhibitor on the back of this thing uh, before uh, we close this thing up. So I want to make sure everything's clean and whatever's going on in there, we do our best to address it. So, all right, let me uh, let me trace this out. We'll get it cut and let's uh, take a look at what we got going on. In there. Okay, so very happy with how this looks. We just got a little bit of rust down in here. And there's a drain hole here and that was plugged up with some acorn shells and some leaves so that's probably what happened that drain hole got plugged up with a whole little water in there and it rusted it through so very happy with how that looks really happy with how this fits it's going to go right on there no problem so what i'm going to do is take a can of rust and heavier i don't know if i got some or if i'm going to have to pick some up tomorrow but I'm gonna spray all down in that seam and soak that real good spray it back in there as far as I can and then spray the back of this and we'll let that sit a day or so and then we'll uh, we'll put this piece on that so yeah you look at the back of this and it's pretty ate up you feel up in here and uh, it's solid. We've got right on the right place. All right, so let me do some digging around, see if I got some rust in here. Or if I don't, we'll get some, and uh, we'll probably pick this back up tomorrow. Okay, well, I meant to go by and get some uh, rust converter on the way home from work, and I forgot all about it and drove straight home, so I just kind of rooted through the cabinet and uh it says ultimate corrosion protection so <laughs> we'll see if it is or not i just soaked it down into that what that joint down there and sprayed some on the back of the panel and we'll let that dry and and uh, i'm sure to be fine but uh anyway uh tonight i want to try and make one of these panels so what i did is i i measured this up and i cut out a piece and then i used this little template I made for this bend, and I showed that earlier on the video, that fit real nice in that groove. So I was able to make that bend on there, and it actually looks like it's going to fit pretty well. So uh, we're gonna tack this thing in there and do the cutting button. I don't know if I'm going to show it again. We just showed it on this one on the last video. And uh, so let me go ahead and just get it in there. And uh, then we'll go back and take a look and uh, and just kind of compare the two. You know, that's a piece of, that's a regular stock piece of van. And this is just a piece of sheet metal. So let's see what they kind of look like side by side. All right, so I got it tacked on there. I figured let's take a look before I cut it. If we look down that body line, and I think that is looking pretty darn good. Got good transition, good and level on both ends. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. In fact, I think that might even be a little better than the uh, than the other one. So we'll see how it comes out. You know, somebody said something on one of the earlier comments about you seem like you're getting burned out on this thing, and you know, I gotta. I, I gotta admit this much welding and this much grinding this you can get burned out on this and that, that's one of the reasons I decided early on when I was doing this that 
uh, plan A of initial getting it on the road was it was not going to be painted. It was just going to be bare metal and ground because, I mean, once you get to the bare metal stage and you get it ground down, I mean, it's a whole nother hours and hours and hours and hundreds of hours of uh, floating it out with filler to get it straight and, and you know unless you're just one of those super metal dudes that I'm not and uh, and you know I'm getting it painted you know if you'd seen my videos on the sh on the Chevy uh, you seen how many episodes you were and there was a lot of hours in that thing and, and I can still look back at this look down the body lines and think oh man I missed that spot I missed that spot but uh, um, you know you just you got to power through it when you're doing something like this you just you got to take off small bites like I said before eating an elephant one little bite at a time every little project every little patch is a its own little project and uh, take that as a victory when that's done and uh, so that's just kind of the way I look at it you know I'm, I'm cruising on this side I, I'm hoping by the end of the month um, I'm pretty much all the way to the back and got everything ground down and that tail light and all that cut out like we did on the other side maybe even get back over and fix the thing I didn't like on the other side and then uh, once we're there then we can get on the inside but getting the whole outside shell of this tongue of this done in bare metal and and all welds is a is a big big victory for me and i'm that's what i'm shooting for i'll be glad to get there so anyway um let me cut and butt this thing in and uh take a look at what it looks like okay we got her uh cut and butted in there and i'll tell you what it's uh all the edges are smooth the body line is nice I don't feel any kind of dip in it. I think it's great. So uh, really happy with that. And it looks every bit as good as that one. So, all right. So uh, I probably should have tried that in the beginning, you know, instead of cutting parts out of the other van, but it's getting junked anyway. So I think that's the way we'll go on the last two. And one thing I did do diff a lot different on this is, you know, on the other side, I tried to just perfectly patch this in and when they were cutting these windows out, you know, this stuff is kind of rattling back and forth. And it, you can see it here. This metal got kind of stretched right in here. So now I'm cutting down it. So I'm cutting down into here to cut and butt that. So I'm kind of getting down into some better metal that's not all warbly. So, uh, yeah. Yep. Good process. I like it. So, okay. Well, uh. I don't know if I get back out here tomorrow or maybe Friday, Thursday, I'm going to Cardinal Gang. So we'll not be out here then. This is uh, today's Tuesday. So maybe tomorrow, maybe Friday, Saturday for sure. Won't matter to you. It'll all be the same video. So, uh, okay, we'll be back on this in uh, just a little bit. All right, also, I did a little. Uh, troubleshooting on what's going on with the 283 here and uh boy it is not good i've got um i checked the oil it was it looked like it was a touch over full so, and i'd smell it and it was like raw gas and i i had just noticed recently that <clears throat> when this thing was running that it's it started smelling rich at the tailpipe and it wasn't doing that before it seemed like it's running fine but other than the noise from earlier in the video. So uh, I think what happened is um, I hope I didn't wipe some of the bearings, but um, with that noise, I'm afraid something like that's happened. So I need to do a little checking into it and find out, Did uh, do I got an injector stuck that is uh, pumping too much fuel in this thing or what's going on? It, it doesn't sound like it's... Um, doesn't sound like or run like it's missing, um, but we're going to check all that stuff and see what the deal is, but, uh, I'm afraid she may be mortally wounded and, uh, it, we may be pulling this thing out of here 
Um, I'm not going to do it right now, probably, you know, probably in the fall or over the winter. And, if, you know, once we find out a little bit more, she may be going in dry dock for the rest of the season, but we'll see. But uh, anyway, a little bit, a little update on that. And uh, definitely not going to take it out on the road anymore until I kind of figure out and resolve what's going on with it. Um, but anyway, uh, for uh, today, I think what we're going to do is let's go ahead and get this patch panel um, tacked in there. Um, do the old cut and butt on that thing and uh, get it to where we can start, you know, tack welding in like we did these other panels. So I'd like to get that one done today and then um, maybe Saturday work on these guys back here. I'd, I'd kind of like to get all those panels tacked in there um, and then just start working my way around with the, with the welding on it. So, okay, let's... Uh, let me get this thing tacked on there and then we'll take a look at what it looks like. Okay, so here's what I did. I went along and uh, punched a bunch of holes in the bottom of this thing. And uh, we're just gonna spot weld this bottom lip to that bottom lip. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about trying to weld that whole thing solid all the way along there upside down. So um, let me get this on there. Um, see what it looks like and we'll take another look real quick before we um, start cutting and doing a final weld on it. All right, so we got that patch tacked on there and it uh, fell into place really good. Uh, lays nice and flat all the way around. So next thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna cut the edges and uh, and uh, butt weld that thing on there, you know. it's. Tell you what, you can almost leave. It came out so nice, you could almost leave an overlap weld on it, but I don't think I'm going to. I think we'll just go ahead and we'll just go ahead and cut it. So uh, let me do that, and then we'll take another look at what it looks like when we're done. Okay, we have got that piece all tacked in and uh, cut and butt welded, and it uh, looks pretty darn good, I think. So. Now it's just a matter of slowly working my way through welding that thing so we don't warp it up. So um, I tell you what, instead of fully welding all these up, I'm just I'm gonna keep going. And we're gonna get these two patches made, get them in there, and then I can just slowly work my way around and spread that out, you know, going between the tacks and letting it cool and then doing all of them again and doing all of them again and uh and uh try not to get in too much of a hurry so all right it's coming pretty good so uh all right next thing let's uh knock some paint off of these two guys here and uh, get them ready and we'll get some patches made for those and see what they look like okay so i was out here kind of doing some other stuff and i uh, want to address a question that uh I guess three different people have asked on different segments of the of these videos is what am I going to do about door seals? Um, so uh, here's it. I'm not really too worried about it in the beginning. My my main goal is get the thing on the road and and yeah, it's going to have air leaks, but you know so do Model A's and convertibles and you know motorcycles. <laughs> all kinds of other, you know, hot rod vehicles are not airtight, but I, I have thought about it. And uh, so kind of here's what I'm gonna do. So if you look like from there, all the way around to there, the factory door seal is gonna work. So that's what I'll do up to that point. Now, when we get down into here, what I'm gonna do is take some square tubing um, I'll have to measure and see how much I need to go from that side to where the lip of the door will touch on the face of the square tubing when you close that. And um, so we'll, we'll weld that in there. And when I do that, we'll put a, a rubber seal on the face because we've got a lip all the way around this door. So like we look at this door. So... Oops, let me shrink this back down. 
so I've got a lip under there. So that square tubing will come over to where we'll have a rubber seal on the back of this door and that should close right up against that and seal that off when we do that. And then I may have to do, um, I'll have to put something on over here. Some kind of square tubing along here. Um, and that's gonna be pretty small so that when this closes, this lip will lay up, lay up against that tubing, which I may even be able to do a round rod there and just kind of glue some, you know, rubber to the back to the back of this lip to where when you close it, it will seal up against there. And we'll just kind of run that all the way along the back of, you know, here down to there because you've got a lip under there. Not much of one there, but enough. So that we'll, we'll be able to get it pretty well sealed off, I think. So anyway, that's the plan for it. And had several people ask about it. And uh, that's what I'm planning on doing eventually. Um, right now, the, the main goal is just get the thing together and on the road and you know, we'll work on that later. Or maybe the next guy will do that. I don't know. So anyway, that's what we're doing. And um, that's all I'm doing out here for tonight. Uh, I think we showed this earlier yet. So Saturday, uh, tomorrow night got baseball game. Friday night got babysitting grandkids. Uh, Saturday morning, going to granddaughter's soccer game. So probably Saturday afternoon. We're gonna get back out here and we're gonna make these two pieces and get them tacked in there. So that's where we are and uh, we'll be back in just a bit. All right, I've been waiting to get this done for a while. This is, looks much better. Probably hadn't had this thing sealed in like 10 years. It needed it really bad. Okay, so I guess today we're going to make these two patches here and we're gonna get them tacked in here and that'll probably be enough for the end of this video so uh i gotta knock all the paint off here let me get that done and uh we'll cut a couple of pieces of metal and uh i'll show you how we bend one up uh before we put it on there so all right let me uh let's get some paint off and then we'll go from there it, needs lots of on this side. it does i got my shop foreman over here doing the cleanup for me. She's doing a great job. I might even have to pay her something. All right, well, the shop foreman is telling me I'm a slob, which I already knew. But, uh, all right, so what we're gonna do here is I cut these two pieces of metal. And I showed this on the last video. I kind of made this gauge to mimic that body line over there. And I'll tell you what, it does not take much of a bend to do it. So, I'm just going to put this in here, right down on that line, I think that is about all it takes, it might even be a little bit too much. right on the money well honey because I'm a slob and I'm, I make a lot of dirt that's why it's dirty over there but thankfully I got you to take care of that for me you still telling me I'm a slob Papa why are you making so much dirt out here <laughs> someday I hope we'll be building her car out here so let's, I'm just going to lay that on there like that, and I'm going to mark this line there, and we're going to do the same at this end. I 
we're on the back side of this, so we're bending the other way. And that's not much space, it's like a half an inch. There is just enough room to get that in there and get that on that line. I lost the line, there it is. Okay, and Take my flat flyer and bend it over just a hair more. I bend it back just a hair, but that's pretty good. Alright. Let's go over here and take a look. Kind of kiss it a little bit. So cool. How's it coming over there, Bailey? What? How's the cleaning coming? How much do I clean out here? Not very, not enough, apparently. It's a good thing I got you for a cleaning supervisor. I need the dust man. Come up here. I need the dust man. Okay, hang on. Alright, so that looks pretty good. So we're going to tack that on there. We'll do the cutting butt on there. And we're going to do it again. So let me do that get both of them and then we'll take a look and see what it looks like. All right, so there we go. I got all four of these pieces in here. Um, all cut and spot butt welded together. Same down there. So that's really all the, well, no, that's not all the panel making I got to do for this side, but that's, that's the majority of it. So next thing we got to do is we got to build this corner we're gonna pull that light out. We're gonna pull this light out. Pretty much what we did on the other side. Let's see if I can do a little neater job of it than I did on the other side. But uh, I'll tell you what, that's, that's gonna be it for me today because it is 100 plus out here. It's supposed to be 100 plus every day this week except for next Saturday. So I think probably what I'm gonna end up doing is I got a lot of stuff going on after work this week. I think I'm gonna um, I'm gonna probably just come out here at night, fire up the welder, you know, do a row of tacks, maybe let it cool, do another row of tacks, and just kind of do that every night and try to get a lot of this filled in. And then uh, next Saturday, when we got a today Sunday, next Saturday when we got a nicer day, um, then get out here and hit a little harder. Maybe we'll make that corner and get those other pieces fabbed up. But. Uh, doing it a little different than last time you know last time i would do a section weld it up and grind it do a section weld it up and grind it but this i'm kind of working my way along and you know go back and grind a little bit and go forward and weld a little bit go back and grind a little bit it's uh kind of taking some of the monotony out of it and it is going much faster on this side just because i've already done it once so 
All right, so that's going to be it for this video. Um, I think we'll go inside. We'll get a word from the Lord, and I'm going to stay in the air conditioning the rest of the day. And uh, maybe watch a movie or listen to the ball game that's already not turning out so good. But, uh, but uh, hey, it's Sunday. We're going to relax a little bit. So let's get a word from the Lord, and uh, we'll call it, uh, call it for this one. Hey, everybody. Thanks for coming along on the uh, video this week. And uh, I think it's going pretty good. I mean, we uh, I feel like I'm cruising along faster than I did on the other side. And and uh, glad to see the progress. So early in the video, I'm kind of having some uh, Impala engine issues. And I'm still trying to decide what to do about that. I don't know if I'm going to uh, try to save that 283. Or I've got a really good running 350 in the van that's going to be parts for the truck. So, we're gonna switch to that, so I'm just gonna kind of do some thinking this week and kind of kind of come up with a plan. I'd like to know where all that fuel from the oil is coming in the oil is coming from. It's got to be either a stuck injector. Um, I'm getting a misfire that I'm not feeling. That's unburnt fuel is getting in the oil, or uh, it could be in the program on the TBI too. You know that program I put in there. If you go back several videos, was. Uh, uh, just the base program for a 305. Now the, the kicker is that the injectors I've got in that TBI are for a 350. So it could be overfueling because of that. So anyway, I'm going to put some thought to it, come up with a plan, and uh, we'll figure out what we're going to do. Uh, anyway, for a message this week, <clears throat> uh, several videos ago I asked for uh, prayers for uh, a friend of mine and his wife, and her name is Judy. And uh, she was suffering from uh, stomach cancer, and and, and it has been suffering pretty bad from it for a few years. Uh, they've tried all kinds of treatments. Um, spent a lot of time in prayer with her, and they're they're just an awesome couple. And I love them both so much. And uh, <clears throat> Judy got the message this past couple weeks that uh, they're going to go ahead and stop treatment and uh, let the let the cancer take its course, and that she probably doesn't have much time left. And uh, you know, very sad to hear that, but uh, this poor woman has suffered terribly through this illness. So, um, just wanted to ask for prayers for her. And you know, I thought that was kind of a a good thing to talk about was was uh, you know loss. And when uh, this has happened to me many times in my Christian life, and I'm sure to a lot of you that uh, you pray for healing for somebody, and um, and uh, and they don't get healed. And, uh, you know, the illness progresses and they pass away, you know, and I've seen it happen with uh, members of my family. Um, a couple times in my church, I know there were two different couples that had little kids that uh, that had terminal illness and and uh, whole churches get together and pray for them. And, and ultimately, God says, you know, it's it's their time. And that's a <clears throat> that's a hard thing to a hard thing to understand, a hard thing to uh to accept you know it's like why why does God take life from somebody uh, when they're so young you know Judy's in her 50s which is young to me um, but um, you know I was uh, at a family member's funeral years ago it was at the cemetery and uh, was just kind of walking around looking at tombstones and um, you know looking at the years I'm kind of fascinated by uh, one how old you know like what year they were born how old that was but then how long they lived and, and in the cemetery you see you, you see the whole range you know from someone that lived 100 years old to someone that lived 50 years to someone that lived 10 years to someone that barely lived a few days you see it all and uh, and it's always uh, designated in years you know you'll see the first year and you'll see the dash and you'll see the year of passing um, and it's like, wow, you know, the whole, a person's whole life, um, condensed down to that dash, you know, what happened between those two times, everything in their life is represented in that little dash, 1975 dash, 2000, whatever, you know, and, um, and I, I remember hearing, uh, uh during a sermon a pastor talking about um, uh, about the length of our life and and what it means here on earth and that 
it's, it's interesting the way he represented it. I don't know if I can do it any justice or not, but he said, he said, if you took a piece of paper, and if you drew a line all the way across that piece of paper. <clears throat> now imagine you got a pen that's never gonna run out and you got paper that's never run out and you just keep going and going and going and going and going. And the length of that line is the length of your life. Right here, that little mark is the length of your life here on earth. The dash is on either side, of, is in the middle and your birth and death date is on either side of that mark. When we read the scripture and we read about, you know, Christ lived 33 years. Um, when we read what he has in store for us, um, most of what he's talking about is this, what comes after the dash and keeps going and going and going. And it's hard to represent eternity, but even if it was just this page, you can see the difference. If that is the length of your life, look how much further that goes and keeps on going, that that's eternity. And that's what, um, that's what Christ is concerned with. He wants to make sure that while you're here, you make the decision uh, to accept the gift of his salvation so that you can spend all of this with him um, in paradise because you're going to spend all of this somewhere and you don't want it to be somewhere else um, you know he christ says he says i go before you to make a place for you if it hadn't have been if it wasn't true i would have told you so and then sometimes we think we don't want to make that decision for christ because Satan tells us that we're no good, and, and really of our own, we're not. But the Lord sent His Son to die for us to, to forgive us our sins so that we can spend this with Him. And, uh, you know, I'll get off on, I'll, I'll get off on, talk, on talking in circles here, not making any sense, but I hope that makes sense to you. In fact, I've talked about the thief on the cross many times on this channel, one of my favorite Bible stories. And if, if you look in the Gospels, there's four representations of that story. And three of them, when Christ is on the cross, both of those criminals are mocking him and making fun of him. Hey, if you're God, why don't you get us off of here and save our lives? But in the book of Luke, we see that something happens to the one criminal and he just he has an epiphany and all of a sudden he stops mocking and he says turns to the other guy and, and he says you know have you no have you no fear of god because we deserve what we're getting and this man doesn't and then he turns to jesus and says uh, remember me when you enter your kingdom and jesus says today you'll be with me in paradise now all of that guy's life as far as we know, because he says, I'm up here because I deserve it. That, that he was not a good guy. That he was, a, he was a criminal. He was a thief. Um, who knows what he was into. He did something pretty bad to get him up there. And he repented in the last couple minutes of his life. So there's no way he could have done more good in those last couple minutes to outweigh all the bad he had done. That's not how it works. Just because he accepted Christ in that minute, recognized who he was, and said, remember me when you enter your kingdom, he was accepted and he was forgiven. And that's awesome. And uh, I shared that story with Judy the other night and, uh, and her husband. And uh, Judy is a believer and her place is secure. And the and, uh, Lord's got, a, got an awesome place for her to come to when that time comes. So anyway, I just ask that you would... Uh, uh, have prayers for that family especially that um, you know to keep her pain free and uh, just to give them both comfort and uh, walk through these last whatever time they've got left that they uh, they'll walk that with God so let's have a word of prayer and uh, and that'll be it for this one father I just uh, thank you for your holy word I thank you for this uh, relationship with Judy that um, 
that we were able to, to talk about you and uh, that um, that she knows who you are and that we know her place is secure. And I just ask that uh, uh, anybody else um, out there watching this, if uh, maybe you're facing the same kind of thing or you're facing a loved one who's passing or a loved one that, you, that they prayed for and prayed for um, to be healed, the healing didn't come here, it came by passing and being with you. Um, we just ask you to minister to all those uh, all those people that uh, have felt that pain and that loss and just uh, let them know um, uh, the awesome place that you have for them and that uh, you love them and you are, you are ready for them. And uh, we ask this in the name of your precious son, Jesus, amen. All right, hit like, hit subscribe, leave a comment. Uh, thank you, everybody, who's been watching lately and for all the good comments. Um, we'll be back on this truck next weekend and see what we can get done on this thing. So talk to you soon.